Hello, I'm Artifax Mars. This one is going to be fun. And it might run a little long, so I suggest you go grab a cup of coffee, sit back, relax, and enjoy. A blogger on the Huffington Post who called herself Shelly Garland uh, wanted to take away the right of white men to vote. Would it be time to deny white men the franchise, she asked Thursday, in the title of her blog post. It's time to wrestle control of the world back from white males, and the first step will be a temporary restriction on the franchise of them, according to Garland. Meaning taking away our white right to vote. If the white, white men no longer had the vote, progressive cause will be strengthened. She explained, it would not be necessary to deny white men indefinitely the denial of the vote to white male men for 20 years just less than a generation would go some way in seeing a decline in the influence of reactionary and neoliberal ideology in the world. Garland blames white male men for electing Donald Trump and voting for the United Kingdom to leave the European Union. The influence of reckless white males were one of the primary reasons that led to the Great Recession, which began in 2008, she added. This also would strike a blow against toxic white masculinity, one that is long needed. Actually, the Great Recession was uh, due to liberal policies and made it too easy for high-risk people to uh, purchase homes and we got burned with a mortgage deal. Garland also followed the idea of redistributing wealth away from white, white male and banning them from holding public office. The violence of white male wealth and income inequality would be a thing of the past. She insisted. So she wants all white males to be poor. Although this may seem unfair and unjust, allowing white males to continue to call shots politically and economically, following their actions over the past 500 years, is the greatest, is the greater injustice Garland concluded. But let's take a look at what Huffington Post did. Wait, man, well, why do we take down the blog down? This is, uh, Shelly Garland's page. They took her down. This is the uh, South Africa version of Huffington Post. Apparently, this blogger doesn't even exist, although uh, I think I have my suspicions that huh? she's been scrubbed from the internet. Yes, Google can do that. Here's why. Now, this used to be the page where they had her post. Huffington Post, I say, is removed. Why could it be time to deny white men the franchise? Published our voices section on April 13th, 2017. We've done this because black submission is from an individual who calls her so, Shelly Garland claimed to be an MA student at UCT, University of Cape Town, cannot be traced and appears not to exist. But take a look. I'm not going to play the video. This video is a South African video where it's 100% hate. They got one white guy, but other than that, it's 100% white hate against white people, white males, and they left this up, and they're all saying basically the same thing, we should be, lose our uh, vote, and not be allowed in public office, and be relegated to second class citizen status, 
Huffington Post had no problem leaving that up, so why should I believe their story that, uh, they can't fight, that they took this down because of the contributor didn't exist? Sorry. I smell BS. They've done this because was blocked submission from an individual called herself Shelly Garland, claimed being MA student UCT, cannot be traced and appears not to exist. Maybe they're punked, maybe they're not. We have immediately bolstered and strengthened our blocking procedures that, until now, have operated on the basis of open communication and good faith. From now on, bloggers will have to verify themselves. We will hold discussions on putting in place even better quality controls. In addition, we note that commentarians content with blog posts and will We'll submit it to the South African Press Ombudsman Joe Theoli for analysis of opinion we carried. HPSA stands aligned with constitutional values of South Africa, particularly the preamble of our constitution of states when the people of South Africa believe that South Africa belongs to all that live in it. United in our diversity. <coughs> that is BS because uh, white male. White people, especially white males, are screwed there. Last time I knew. Except what is strictly relevant to the matter reported as public interest to do so, media shall avoid discriminatory or denigratory references to people's race, gender, sex, pregnancy, marital status, ethnic or social origin, color, social, sexual orientation, age, disability, religion, conscious belief, culture, language, and birth or other status. Nor shall it refer to people's status in a prejudice, prejudicial or pejorative context. Then why did you have that video which is full of hate against white males? You left that up. This is why I don't believe you. Media has right and the duty to report and comment on all matters of legitimate public interest. This right and duty must, however, be balanced against the obligation not to publish material that amounts to propaganda for war, incitement of imminent violence, or an advocacy of hatred that is based on race, ethnicity, gender, or religion, and that constitutes incitement to cause harm. We apologize for the oversight. We welcome further discussion. Please email blog to Huffington Post South African.com. I just might do that, by the way. Uh, it gets worse even from here. Well, that's not one. Well, the citizen... Again, South Africa. They're being called on to... The editor is being called on to resign. Recently launched news and opinion website... SA is embroiled in controversy after it emerged in a published opinion, uh, an opinion piece from a writer who appears not to not actually exist. 
They got burned. Let's face it. They probably constructed uh, Shelly themselves, and they probably constructed this Shelly Garland themselves, and they got burned when people started raising havoc. Then the police advocated for white male men to lose the right to vote, and was reported very, reportedly very popular on site. However, when Kate Tom, other than Laura Twiggs, investigated, the supposed author of the opinion piece, Shelly Garland that emerged what she appeared to be fake online construction. Garland had earlier described had been described as an MA philosophy student in her Twitter bio such as perpetual feminist causing her treat of the patriarchy and lived in Auckland, New Zealand. That's, uh, by the way, I heard a different story about where she lived, but, uh, Twigs on her could not find a record of her at the University of Johannesburg, where she claimed to have studied. She also claimed to be a student, University of Cape Town student. <laughs> Well, they just get started over there in uh, well, South Africa, and already they're getting in trouble. Way to go, Huffington Post. Like I said, I don't believe them. I think they uh, did this intentionally, and somebody got on them. This, uh, this wasn't uh, necessarily in the, you know, American... This wasn't in the American version. This was in South African version. So, if you're on the American version, you wouldn't have seen it. Well, the stuff gets around the uh, world uh, rather quickly. So, there you have it. Either the Huffington Post got punked, or perhaps a, uh, perhaps they made this one up. Good luck. I didn't find any trace of this Shelly Garland either. Either way, I'm enjoying watching them, uh, get kicked in the seat of their pants. I'm liking this. I'm Artifacts Mars. Thanks for watching.